So I would like to start off by inviting uh, Claire Walker to give her reflections on resilient organisations in a time of change. And the British Chamber of Commerce has been at the centre of a lot of these internally and externally over the past three years. Claire. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation as well. I think the first thing to say, and this is, is ob obviously no, no rocket science, is that, that I think we have to accept that the non-Brexit policy ag agenda has been squeezed. And I think for a while, I think we were, were pretending that things were actually normal. And I think we now need to accept that they're not normal and that we are living in extraordinary times. I also think that then creates a challenge for other organisations that often have a long shopping list of things that they want to change. But actually, in this kind of current uh, political atmosphere, they probably can only get that top number one thing through and they really need to prioritise. And that's a new way of thinking for organisations that haven't been used to um, working in that way and having those kind of relationships. I think critically, and one of the things that BCC has tried to do all the way through uh, the Brexit process, is communicate uncertainty. So what you see an awful lot of the time, and there's, there's, a, there's a role for it, is political, political commentary. But actually, that's very unhelpful when you're trying to guide your members and guide your businesses through quite a difficult situation. So we've been doing things like risk registers and checklists all the way through to actually present, without any spin, what the evidence um, suggests. There's also a real, uh, a real resurgence, I think, um, and something uh, uh, which, which should be pointed out, of the role of conduits. Um, and by that, I mean a membership organisations in situations like this. Sometimes government do not have the answer on things. Sometimes we do not have the answer on things. But actually, there is a real role for organisations to work with other organisations to find common ground and to find a way through. And one of the things I'm most proud about the work that BCC have done in the last couple of years is to point out when there aren't answers and when there isn't answers for businesses. And often it is not because of any political reasoning. It is just because someone hasn't thought about it. And that's a really important role for organisations to translate and to advocate on behalf, particularly when time is limited. I also think that there is things that are certain. So it is probably very likely that there will be a change in the way that we trade. Um, and for an organisation like the BCC that has a network of, 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 of chambers up and down the country that do an awful lot of trading, customs work, then actually we can plan for a change in our trading environment and in fact we are doing so. That doesn't mean that we know exactly what that looks like, but we do have a responsibility to actually prepare um, our organisations um, uh, for, for what will come. And I think we do know that there will be a general election and we do need to know uh, what our top priorities are in the usual manifesto process. Those are probably the only two things that are certain, um, but those are the two things that you should, uh, should link to. And, and then someone said to me the other day, oh, it must be a nightmare, you've had a change of government, you know, everything has changed. Um, and I think there is something to recognise as public affairs professionals that actually changes of government happen all the time. They may not be as radical as, what they've just ha as what's just happened, but actually the very purpose of having good public affairs professionals is they don't panic, that they look at where the relationships stay the same, they look at building relationships whether or not in the current circumstances or beyond with key people that don't move civil servants, other non-governmental officials, and they look to find uh, ways of working with cross-sector so they can in enhance um, uh, their impact. And there is also a huge opportunity to start working with new people, bringing them up to speed and talking about the issues that are really important to your members. In terms of areas that I think we will see beyond Brexit that we will see um, most change in, I think I've mentioned international trade and I think that is something that we will see a huge amount of prominence on. And, you know, the number of times that people have talked to me about WTO rules or no deal rules or our trade deal with the US in the public consciousness has gone up such a huge amount than before they were. So we talk about how much they, time it took to... 
uh, get to their see their GP or um, how long it would take for them to get to the school that they desired for their children. Those were the kind of public consciousness conversations that happen. Now people say, do you think you'll get a good deal with the US or how do you think Barnier will respond? And I think that's something really interesting about our public consciousness that that has really shifted and I cannot see that reducing um, over time. I also think um, we are dealing with a, a level of technology change that we have never seen before. And that's only, whether or not with Brexit or beyond Brexit, that's only going to increase. So what does that look like? automation in logistics, changing um, driverless cars, lorries, um, and what does industry look like with electrification? And those investment decisions um, are having a great level of visibility, um, but we need to make sure there's a, a high level of focus. And then I think the changing workforce is an area where there's going to be a huge amount of focus. Maybe because immigration rules will change, or maybe there will be a different uh, expectation around that. Um, but actually, demographics will force some significant policy change. Um, there is already a rise in agile um, and flexible working. I think we will only uh, see, that, see that increase. And actually, um, we're already experiencing, um, even being uh, within the EU in the current situation, um, a skills shortage. So we've got to think about ways that we can encourage that. And actually, that's why BCC in a couple of weeks will be launching a people campaign. So I think we know these things won't change. There will be all ranges of how much they will be impacted. But there's lots of things that can be done within that, within those remits that we know that we can drive forward. Um, so to summarise and to pass on to, to your learned colleagues, um, there are things that are definite. We need to group together more and membership organisations are a great way of doing that, and I'm not just saying that because I represent one. You must communicate in certainty with your members. You know, that is your responsibility, and it's one that we take incredibly seriously. And we can see some of those big trends, and they are unrelated to some of the things that are going on in Westminster at the moment. Thank you very much, Claire.